What's up painting friends? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof and a couple months ago I had a YouTube video where I had a review of Liquitex heavy body acrylic paints and under that video I had some comments of people asking me to review the soft body acrylic paints by Liquitex and I also had a few people tell me that the soft body paints would probably be working better than the heavy body acrylic paints for my style so I purchased a bunch of the soft body acrylic paints, enough colors so that I could do a painting, and I'm here to have a review of these paints. So uh, this is a review of soft body acrylic paints, professional grade by Liquitex. Let's get this review going. So here you're seeing me remove the seal for opening up these paints. That's nice that they put that seal there so that you know the paint's going to be fresh and uh, the right consistency when you're using it. Here's a close-up of the bottles. These are just two US fluid ounce bottles. So once you open up the lid, you see it has that nice little nozzle there. It looks like you can cut that nozzle if you would like to make the paint come out, you know, with a, a little bit of a wider opening. Um, but I just kept them the way they were because I thought that was fine. I'm mostly going to be using these for smaller paintings. I think if you were using these for larger paintings, you might want to cut a larger opening so you can get more paint out more quickly. And it's nice you just pop that cap right back on after you get some paint on there and that provides a good seal to keep the paint uh, the right consistency and keep it from drying out. So my first initial thoughts as I was putting the paint onto this little palette here is that this soft body paint doesn't feel like it's that much more liquid than the heavy bodied acrylics. It, looks similar on the palette, uh, the way that it holds its form and holds that texture in that nice little paint spot. Some pigments were a little bit thinner than others. Uh, the greens and the browns were a little thicker and like the yellows and reds were a little thinner, um, meaning that they, you know, the uh, viscosity was different between the, the pigments a little bit. And to actually compare these against the heavy body acrylic paints, I decided to put two heavy body acrylic paints on there. I put some sap green and some of my cadmium yellow medium to compare to my sap green uh, soft body acrylic paints. And also I think this is a different yellow, uh, but I still wanted to compare the thickness and how the paint runs. So here I'm doing a little pigment test to see how far this pigment carries, doing some brush strokes here. First I'm using the soft body acrylic paints for the sap green, just seeing how far that carries before I have to dip it in the paint again. And next I dip the paintbrush into the heavy body acrylic just to compare how those two worked. And they looked pretty similar. Uh, the soft body acrylic, I don't know if I was pressing quite as hard because it looks like my argument is better for the heavy body acrylic paint on that one. <laughs> but moving to the yellow, we really did see a great difference. So for the yellow, I just did a solid streak for the whole thing just to see how far that line could carry before we lost pigment or before it started to get kind of blotchy. And the top line there is the soft body acrylic paints. You can see a nice smooth long line uh, without it really fading until we get to the edge there and it's not getting blotchy at all. It just keeps right on that palette. And then for the heavy bodied acrylics we start to see some blotchiness there about halfway as far as the soft body acrylic paints. So looking at that I'm feeling very hopeful that these soft body acrylic paints are going to work the way that I prefer and just give me those nice long detailed lines without needing to dip the paint into the water. So let's see how that plays out while I'm creating an actual painting. My painting style is realistic uh, with a lot of detail and a lot of layering uh, for oils and acrylic paints usually. Uh, so I always start by sketching out the scene with a thin down paint uh, just so that it's a little more translucent and it dries more quickly. Uh, so I did dip the paint in the water there just to sketch it out. Uh, no complaints there. It worked just like I was hoping it would. Uh, and next we get our sketch down then we start working on building up things in the farthest, farthest in the background and then making our way towards the foreground. So we're starting with some colors in the sky. 
And for this painting, I was referencing a couple different skies uh, to create like a brand new sky, not something from a photograph. So I play around with the color here a little bit. Um, but so you'll see me kind of changing up the color of the sky here and there, uh, but just focusing on the soft body acrylic paints. When I'm blending colors, it's working very well. It, you know, as well as blending colors can go for acrylic paints. Uh, I always prefer blending colors more with oils because I think the pigments uh, blend a little bit better <laughs> uh, than acrylics, but these ones are working uh, fairly well, uh, similar to how the heavy body acrylic paints work, not really losing any pigment or anything overpowering. Uh, some pigments have a little bit more power than others, uh, but that's something you kind of learn to work with as you keep working with the paints. So we're starting with just like this uh, kind of muted dusk color sky, adding more of that magenta color and starting to work that in where I'm going to be adding some clouds later. The paint coverage is fantastic. It's This is one thing already that I'm liking more than the heavy bodied acrylic paints. So it's just filling in all those little spaces on this canvas panel. It's not leaving any white space. Uh, because the paint is a little bit more fluid, it does fill in those white spaces a little better. You don't have to press quite as hard with the brush and you don't have to go back and forth over the same spot quite as many times as you would with the heavy body acrylic paints uh, because it has a little bit more fluidity and you can just like brush those lines on there. And I haven't had to add any water yet to the paint on the palette. Usually if I'm working in oils or the heavy body acrylics, I have to mix some water in with the paint already. Uh, or if it's oils, I'm mixing citrus solvents into the paint to thin it down to get a little better coverage uh, to get that nice smooth uh, coverage and cover in all the white spaces without, without the paint getting too thick on my first layer. So that's something that I don't have to do with the soft body acrylics. I don't have to add any water. It just kind of blends right in just the way I want on the first time. So here I'm still continuing to add my base layer of paint where I just kind of cover up all the white space on the canvas, starting to add little bits of highlights and shadows, but not too much detail yet. And as you can see, I was able to get some pretty fine detailed lines uh, without adding any water to the paint. Uh, so I'm very pleased so far with how this is uh, starting to progress. The colors are blending very well on the canvas as well. Uh, I think that also has to do with the fluidity. It's not leaving any texture. Uh, it's not leaving any um, like weird brush stroke marks. Uh, you know, the, the more advanced you are with using a brush too, that's going to help you as well here, but uh, it's not like choppy and it's not, uh, it's, it's making it look very realistic uh, without me having to do extra work that I usually would have to do with either the heavy body acrylics or with oils. So now that background sky layer has dried, it dries at about the same rate as a normal acrylic paint uh, based on your, you know, your atmosphere where you live, your climate. Uh, it, well, I didn't see a huge difference in drying time. It didn't seem like it took longer or less time to dry. Uh, so that's pretty much consistent. Uh, so I'm starting to layer up the highlights on the clouds, adding some white first, and I'm gonna add some yellow over that. Uh, and I wanted to test out how well dry brushing works with this type of paint. And it was a little trickier at first, uh, but I think I figured it out. Uh, you do have to take more of the pigment off of the brush on your napkin uh, for dry brushing because it's so fluid. Uh, it's, it does keep kind of dragging out on the canvas. Uh, so you got to take a little excess paint off there and then really lightly, gently press uh, to get that dry brush on there. You don't want to press too hard. So that's something that is different uh, when using heavy body paints because the paint is more fluid. Uh, it's a little bit trickier to dry brush. You just got to make sure you get excess, all the excess paint off and press a little bit more lightly uh, to get that effect. But layering pigment over pigment is working well. I'm not seeing uh, too translucent of paint. Like the paint is thick pigment wise, <laughs> not consistency wise. So it is layering over uh, the other ones pretty opaquely, which I was pleasantly surprised with. I thought that maybe it would be a little more see-through. Uh, so yeah, if anything, Liquitex is 
absolutely right that these soft body acrylic paints are thinner but have the same amount of pigment. Here I'm testing out the warm colors. So this is my yellow mixed with a little hint of my reds and white as well. Uh, and that was one of the things that I talked about on my review of the heavy bodied acrylic paints that I wasn't the happiest with the yellow paint because it was kind of translucent, uh, which it does say on the bottle, the yellows are always a little more translucent than the other uh, colors, but uh, someone or a couple people left some nice comments kind of guiding me and letting me know that if you add white first, then you layer the yellow on top of that, it helps the yellow to look a little bit more opaque. So that's what I did here. Uh, and that did help. Uh, so yeah, no complaints with the yellow. <laughs> uh, now that I learned that adding white before yellow helps the yellow to look more opaque. So I touched on most of the topics I wanted to cover in this review, uh, so I'll just give a summary of my review of the Liquitex Professional Soft Body Acrylic Paints. Uh, number one, they're awesome. Number two, they're awesome. <laughs> uh, so I definitely think I prefer these over the heavy body acrylic paints for my style. And for anyone that is working with detailed realism paintings where they don't want to accumulate too much texture and they don't want to have to add water to the paint to thin it down so they can get those nice detailed intricate lines. These are your paints. These are fantastic. Uh, the color is amazing. Look at that vibrancy. I purposely picked a painting scene that had all of the colors in it, like warm to cool spectrum, uh, some reds, yellows, oranges, blues, greens. And I am so happy with the way that these colors go on that canvas. I think that the color is just as rich as oil paint. And because the paint itself uh, has the viscosity that makes it thinner than oil paint, uh, it can get you those detailed lines without having to thin the paint down. So. Not once in this painting did I have to dip that brush in the water to get a thinner line. I just dipped the paint, the brush right into the paint, and I just put my line right on the canvas. I could use liner brushes with this. I could use fan brushes. I can use round tip brushes, flat tip brushes. I could use bristly brushes. So I tried a few different brush strokes with this and I was very happy with the way they all turned out. Uh, as you can see, I set the depth very well in this painting. Uh, and that was, you know, it, thanks to the way that these colors blend, worked out very well. Uh, so yeah, very happy, very pleasantly surprised. If you guys have used these paints uh, yourself, then you could leave a comment letting me know any other things that you uh, found out about them that I did not touch on in this video. Uh, or if you guys are looking to purchase these paints to use yourself, I have a link for them in the description under this video that takes you to my Amazon Associates account. Um, where you can purchase these paints and that will give me a little commission uh, for recommending them to you. So if you guys have any other questions uh, about these paints that, or you'd like to see another video of me using these paints, then let me know in the comments. And other than that, uh, overall I give these an A plus and I will absolutely be using these more. I bought four more colors of these after I used this, uh, after I did this painting. So I will definitely be using these for plein air painting on my travels coming up soon. Uh, and I can't wait to show you guys how those all turn out because I am just so very, very pleasantly pleased with this. Uh, it all just comes down to the thickness of the paint and the pigment. It's, it's just A plus, A plus. Awesome, great stuff. All right, thanks for watching guys. Have a great day and happy painting. Bye-bye.